All right, hey everybody, it's Evan from devsun.com. In this video, we're gonna go over handling user inputs and binding that data inside of Svelte. So in the last video, we went over variables and using them inside our DOM elements here. And of course, we added a button that adds to this counter every time we click on it. But now we're actually going to be handling user inputs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so the user can enter their name here and it'll say hello and then whatever their name is up at the top here. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just comment this out for now. We're not gonna need it. All right, so let's go ahead and add an input tag here. I'm gonna have the type equal to text and I'm gonna have this saved like so. And now if we look at our browser here, we can see we have an input, type whatever we want inside. It's not actually doing anything yet. So now let's go ahead and add the functionality to make whatever we type in this input update whatever is said up here. So I'm gonna change our name variable up at the top here to just be an empty string. And then I'm going to create another function. I'm gonna call this function handle input. And now inside handle input, I'm actually passing in a event parameter here. And this events parameter is going to be sent from our input. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to put on input. I'm gonna set that equal to our function name here. In this case, it's handle input. Again, we're not calling the function, we're just passing the name or the reference of the function. And now what this does is it's going to call this function, but it's going to pass in a events parameter here. Obviously it's showing me a warning here because you're not supposed to do this, but this is essentially what it's doing. It's, it's passing the event variable from our input to our function. So let's go ahead and remove this real quick. And now if we grab our name variable and set it equal to event, which is the parameter we're passing in here, dot target dot value. Now we can actually access the value of our input and have our name be set to that value. Now, if I go ahead and save this and we go to our browser, I'm going to go ahead and type a random name. Let's say, hello, Bob. We see now that it updates here. And if I were to backspace, it can get rid of it. Maybe I can type a name like John. You see John show up here. However, this isn't actually a two-way bind. You see that the input changes up here, but if up here were to change, it wouldn't change our input. Let me show you an example. Let's say we added a button. I'm going to have the label for this button be set name to unknown. We're going to add a on click event here. I'm going to create a function called reset name and we're going to set name to unknown. I'm going to pass that function to our on click. And now when we call this reset name function, it's gonna set our name variable to be unknown. Let me show you an example. So if I go ahead and click set name to unknown here, it's gonna say hello unknown. Now, if I change this input here to let's say Bob, you're gonna see now it's reset it to Bob, but let's see what happens when we say set name to unknown. It changes unknown up here, but it doesn't change this name to unknown in our input. So how do we make it? So when we change up here, that it's in sync with our input value here. So what we can do is we can go to our input input here. I'm going to add a value property to this. I'm going to use curly braces and I'm going to set the value equal to our name variable up here. And now when we go to our browser, if I click set name to unknown, we're going to see now that it sets it up here as well as it sets it in our input. And if I change our input to be, let's say my name again, and then I click set name to unknown, it's going to change it up here as well as in our input. So this is what is known as a two-way bind. And there's actually another shorthand that we can use in Svelte. And this is one of my favorite features personally. We can actually use a property here called bind colon value and then set it equal to name. And now when we go back to our browser and I click set name to unknown, we see that the functionality still works like so. And if I were to change this to be Evan, it updates both here and in our input. And if I click set name to unknown, it sets it to both once again. Same functionality, just a nice little shorthand here. It just makes everything very nice and easy to read. Definitely one of my favorite features of Svelte. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below or you can join the Devisun Discord server, and I'm sure someone will be able to help you out there. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.